Hello, I'm Bill Leifold, and welcome to this edition of Breakfast at the Barracks. Joining me today is Ruth Mandel, Director of the Eagleton Institute of Politics at Rutgers, New Brunswick. Ruth, welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Um, for our viewers who don't know about Eagleton Institute of Politics, can you give us the mission and the overview of kind of what the Institute does? Sure, I'd be delighted. Eagleton has been in existence for over half a century at Rutgers as part of Rutgers University as its Institute of Politics. Um, it's always been concerned with U.S. politics and government, so mm -hmm. that's the focus. Uh, and like the rest of the university, it has a mission of research, education, and public service. Our special way of dealing with politics, as opposed to, for instance, the study of politics in the Department of Political Science and other units, is to emphasize the connection between the practice and the study. So we try to bring the practice together with the study, the practitioners together with the scholars and the students, and see what that exchange will yield. It's been, um, it's really been um, our mission over the years to look at questions and issues mm -hmm. that have been neglected or have never been asked before, and to build programming around answering some of those questions. So for example, um, the study of women in politics, which we began in 1971 in the Center for American Women and Politics, or public opinion polling, the Rutgers-Eagleton poll, which has been in existence also since 1971. Rutgers was the first university in the country to have a statewide public opinion poll. Now okay. there are not only many in this state, but they're at universities around the country. Uh, so we've been kind of, I like to think of Eagleton as some, something between a sandbox um, to play in with new ideas uh -huh. uh, and uh, exploration uh, and uh, an institute that serves the entire university uh, in the study of politics. From looking at your historical programming and your upcoming programs, it seems very interdisciplinary in terms of um, discipline specifics. It looks very um, diverse in terms of the topics that you cover. Yeah. Um, I know um, that there was an immigration panel discussion. I know that there have been some other things. Can you talk to us about some of the programs that you're proud of over this past year? Sure. Well, let me just say that from the very beginning, we've had a very strong commitment to, even though we're a research institute, to students in education. So from day one, there's been a fellowship program for graduate students, mm -hmm. and in the recent decades, a three-semester undergraduate associates program, which is a certificate program. So that's continuity. And then in more recent years, in addition to the programs I mentioned before, we've always um, focused on state politics and government, state politics nationally, uh, mm -hmm. as well as New Jersey. Uh, and more recently, developed program areas in youth political participation, in immigration and democracy, I think you just right. referred to, and I've been working with a team of people fairly intensively now for a little while to develop something called the Center on the American Governor, which, believe it or not, Rutgers will be the only university in the country to have a special program focusing on the state executive and the power of the state executive. And it seems a little ironic, uh, given that, um, uh, well, for example, 17 presidents of the United States mm -hmm. were previously governors, and yet if you're a student at most universities and colleges, you can't take a course about governors. But if you turn on the TV today, almost everything you're seeing is governors, whether it's the New Jersey governor or the Wisconsin governor. So executive power and executive leadership in the states is a very important subject. It's been neglected and consistent with what I said before about right. Eagleton, we think this is a subject should, that should be investigated. So we are building a center that will have a very special area about New Jersey governors and then a national focus as well uh, with the usual conferences and a lot of, it's the 21st century, a lot of this will be in cyberspace. We'll have a virtual center that people anywhere in the country can come to. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So um, are, are you envisioning um, a website that will hold statistics or be able to talk about, you know, who's a governor in which state, where they came from in terms of education? Um, are you talking about being part of the governor's conference, which traditionally meets and has larger conversations about public policy issues, are, are, are all those things part of the center I planning? I think the best thing would be, uh, the best answer would be a link to all of that. Right. National Governors Association, we had a small meeting in um, December, an advisory group, uh, including the head of the National Governors Association and a few scholars who study governors. It's not a large group of people. We're going to try to stimulate scholarship. Uh, and uh, 
if, for example, um, you want to learn about uh, what happened, uh, well, right now, talk about Japan, right? Well, mm -hmm. there was a Three Mile Island and Governor Thornburg in Pennsylvania right. and his leadership, and there is a Thornburg archive in Pittsburgh. You will be able to link through, if you come to the Center on the American Governor, Okay. Um, you will be able to link through to any of those kinds of papers and projects around the country and to historical information. Now, all this will depend on one big thing, fundraising. I was going to ask the question. <laughs> Is it going right. to be funded through a it, grant, fundraising? Right. Okay. Well, it's at the moment, we've been fortunate to have um, a little bit of money from some of the New Jersey governors whose sections we're putting up. Um, okay. But um, that's pretty much about them and their leadership and their terms uh, and a small grant uh, that allowed us to hold the planning committee meeting. But we are really working to develop major support and that is uh, on the table for it's certainly been what I've been working on intensively and we're hoping in the next year or so to be able to uh, succeed in some really significant investments. I hope, I hope that will happen. Uh, and ultimately, hey, ultimately we want what everyone wants we want an endowment right. so that, uh, you know, <laughs> anyone continue, wants right. his or her name on the center. Um, <laughs> It'll work. We, we're open to discussions, yeah. I, I want to talk a little bit about your research. Your research sure. focuses on um, leadership specifically around women yes. and women in politics. So um, can you give me some insight to kind of what you've, what you've found or what you're looking at and kind of give our viewers a sense of what your, what your research is a little bit more than just those three words kind of thing? Well, when I first came to Rutgers, which was a very long time ago, uh, the Center for American Women on Politics was being established, and I was fortunate enough to uh, come here with my PhD in American literature okay. and end up in an institute of politics and develop that center, and I directed it for over 20 years uh, in its early stages, and I'm very proud of what we did, but also where we are. Mm -hmm. It's under new leadership and it's thriving and I think doing very good work. It is um, an, a really valuable national resource. Uh, it serves the media, it serves women in politics, right. it serves students all over the country. It's, it's terrific. Um, why I got interested in the subject because uh, something called the women's movement happened and it, you know very it's complicated but simply put um, I realized as so many women did in those years so many young women in those years that gee we never noticed we wow. never talked about it I mean I studied I studied American literature got a PhD and honestly I didn't realize that um, most of the books we studied, as well as the authors, never mentioned women or they were in very limited roles mm -hmm. and very stereotypical roles and so forth. And as far as women in politics was concerned, I mean, my mother's great heroine was Eleanor Roosevelt. And it's fascinating for how many years, if you asked women, well, who do you know or who's your image of a woman leader? The only person they could come up with was Eleanor Roosevelt. And I think in the years since then, we've increased the role models and the images and certainly change the aspirations of women who now include leadership among the kinds of dreams they have for themselves. Let's talk about a little bit about the last few political uh, last few election cycles. Sure. I think I'm fascinated by for me the 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 variety of women how women are covered from Sarah Palin to Christina O'Donnell to Hillary Clinton. Um, I, I mean they seem to take different scrutiny on from the media and the conversations that they have. Um, as well as what they wear, and a whole bunch of different things that are out there that I don't think that men, from John McCain to Barack Obama to other folks, aren't aren't kind of um, saddled with, and so to speak. So, what are you, what's your perspective on those kind of issues? Well, you know, uh, honestly, in our present world of media, um, 24 hours, seven days a week, everybody is under scrutiny, and everybody's made fun of if there's something to make fun of. So, um, I think it's kind of across the board. Uh, it is true that stereotypes linger, habits linger, mm -hmm. making fun of women for or looking at them in terms of their hairdos or their clothes or that kind of thing that seems uh, as if it should be irrelevant comes up more, um, but it, it comes up sometimes for men as well. Okay. I think the really important um, point about that is that once women cross a certain kind of threshold of leadership, 
that really goes away. I mean, you heard some of that about Hillary uh, Clinton in earlier years, and even through the presidential campaign, you don't hear a whole lot of it now. She's a serious right. major national figure leader, probably the most important woman in politics of our time. Um, and you don't hear about the justices on the, the associate right. justices on the Supreme Court, or even the women who are governors. Uh, some women, you referred to the last elections. Uh, well, there were colorful characters, mm -hmm. and uh, they, uh, yeah, they got treatment from comedians and reporters um, as well. Um, so did male colorful characters. I think we had a particularly interesting group of um, unusual women characters the last time. So we'll see how we'll see what happens in the future. So I do think in the 2008 cycle. Um, before that, the presidential cycle, there was some egregious examples of sexism in the media. Yeah. But uh, hopefully everyone learned a lesson from that, and we will see much less of that. Let's, let's talk about Congress, especially the Senate and the House of Representatives. Sure. Um, in the last election cycle, we were doing so well in terms of adding women to memberships in terms of elected offices. And for the first time in a long time, we've lost a, we've lost a large number of women. Um, so what, what do you think that's about in politics in terms of positioning? <laughs> I mean, it just kind of seemed to come out of nowhere, you know. Well, I probably wouldn't say large number. Uh, I mean, in the Congress, for example, there are 17 women in the Senate now. Um, there are 71 women in the House. We lost two women in the House. Uh, in other words, there are 88 members now out of the 535 in the House and Senate. And last time, we had two more. So... Um, that's not a large loss. We have small numbers, so any loss is annoying right. and significant. Where we saw a bigger drop was actually in state legislatures. We lost about 100 women around the country in the last cycle, and that made the percentage go down. It went down one point, but if you look at the line over the last 10 years, it's been pretty flat. So the concern is... Where do we see the growth? Mm -hmm. Where do we see the future? Because for the entire period that we've been studying women in politics, ever since the women's movement said, hey, where are the women leaders? We need to focus on that. Um, our mantra has been slow but steady. Okay. Incremental progress. And we would look at every election cycle and say, well, we haven't gone up much, but we've gone up. Right. And you'd see that pattern building. So everything in the early 70s was under 5% women's representation. But that went up a percentage point each time, starting in 92. It went up in the Congress. It took until 1992 for a change in okay. the Congress. Um, now, for the last 10 years, not so much. So there are very big questions about what that means and what will the future look like. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, at this particular time, my producer's telling me time's up. So I want to encourage our viewers to go check out the website for the Eagleton Institute of Politics. I want to thank you again, Ruth, for being here. It was an honor to my meet pleasure. you. My pleasure. All right. Um, to our viewers, we'll be right back.